Immunisation is one of the most hotly debated and contentious issues amongst new parents today. Here to answer all your questions and hopefully allay some of your fears is consultant paediatrician Dr Ian Pollock from the Barnet and Chase Farm Hospitals in North London. Dr Pollock, thanks for coming down. What is immunisation? Immunisation is a way of giving the body a chance to meet an infection without actually the risks of getting the infection. It's a natural process coming across lots of organisms and infections in the world. If you're not immunised, what happens the first time you meet the infection is you get ill. Um, now that illness, what happens is you can have all sorts of problems depending on the sort of infection. Mm. And what your body does, it mounts a defence, it tries to conquer the infection and get rid of it. And most of the time it can do that, but some of the time it doesn't. And then you can be very ill or you can die. Okay. Now. Obviously, there's been a lot of, of press attention this year, in particular on one uh, jab or a set of jabs, the MMR. What's the latest understanding on the MMR? Well, I think most medical people didn't think there was ever a real problem with MMR. There were a lot of concerns amongst people, I think, based on very little evidence. And some more recent careful work doesn't show any connection worth talking about between MMR and some of the problems that were said to be associated with it. So as far as the medical profession is concerned, it is safe, continue to have your children immunised uh, against MMR um, and, and, and please get on with it. Absolutely. I think most of the world wondered what we were doing in Great Britain having the scare. Most of the world just got on and gave it. Now one of the scares that I know parents I've spoken to have, have expressed is why do we need to give it as a three, sort of a one injection for three things at the same time? Isn't that sort of, you know, overdosing the body? The body's actually terribly good at dealing with lots of things at one time. That's the natural process. You know, at any one time, your body is covered in all sorts of bugs, sitting on your skin, sitting in your gut. It's normal, millions of them. So there's nothing unusual about the body dealing with lots of things at one time. That's natural. If you gave every immunization separately, you have to space them out. It means more pain, more injections, but it also means you go longer not being protected. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get the benefit from these vaccinations, you've got to have them as early as is reasonable and safe, and they work. So spacing them out means you have more visits, more injections, and you delay the protection. So children will get ill in that time until you've had the full set of vaccinations. Okay, now I've heard that the three injections together used to be bonded with mercury. Is that an old wives' tale or was that uh, the truth? Well, I'm not sure bonding. Most preservatives, most, um, uh, most vaccines have to have something to make sure they don't go off, they, they keep safe, they don't degrade. Some have preservatives in, and there is, in some of them, a very small amount of the preservative that has a small amount of mercury in it. I don't think anyone believes there's any good evidence that that small amount matters at all. It's an incredibly small amount. Right, okay. So as far as you're concerned, it's okay. now. Mm. Isn't it okay just to get an infection and recover naturally like, like we did centuries ago? I guess that's a viewpoint. Uh, and I th would imagine that these days, sp certainly in this country, lots of people haven't seen some of the illnesses that the vaccines are preventing. And I guess that's a problem. Mm. Because if you haven't seen whooping cough, uh, and many people haven't, it's hard to know why you should try and prevent it. The same question for measles. Many people haven't seen these infections. If you get these infections, um, and this still happens, unfortunately, in many parts of the world, ch young children die. If they don't die, they get left with serious side effects of these infections, and that can be brain damage, cerebral palsy, deafness, all sorts of very unpleasant things. What the vaccine does, if you have the vaccination, even if there are some small side effects, these are nothing compared with the damage that can happen from these infections. Mm. Okay. Now, I've got some questions that have, have been sent in to us and I just want to run through a few of them with you. Um, can my baby child, baby or child catch an infection from a child who's just been immunised? Should I keep away? No evidence for that at all. Most of the vaccinations are actually dead. In other words, they don't contain any living material at all. And the ones that do have something living don't seem to be infectious to cause the infection in somebody else. So that's very safe. Okay. Well, when I had my, my five week old I wanted to take her swimming to the public baths and I was told oh no you can't do that you can't take an unimmunized child into public mm. pools is that an old wives tale 
It's a very old wives' tale, uh, a very old wives' um, mermaid tale. I okay, think. good, because I ignored, the, I ignored the advice and went yeah. swimming with my daughter anyway. No evidence for that at all. Right. Okay. That was very th I think that was somebody's theoretical concern at some point. Right. I don't think we believe there's any evidence in that at all. Okay. Now, how are most vaccines given now? The vast majority now give us injections intramuscularly, either into the arm, sometimes into the leg. Okay. And, you know, why are immunizations given more than once in some cases? Well, they don't always work when you give them the first time. So sometimes, and that's, this is the case with MMR, not all the children who get the vaccination, it won't work in all of them. If you give it a second time, it tends to work in almost 100%. In other words, right. there's a, a good reaction, the body reacts to it and makes antibodies. But some of them need even more, need like three, for the body's memory to really recognize those infections and to make a good memory of defense. So when it does meet the real infection, it's got a good level of protection. Okay. What um, immunizations are, or vaccines, should I say, are being given at the moment for children in Britain? Well, there's a routine program which is offered to all children. For some children um, at birth in the first week are offered BCG, which is protection against TB. Now, that isn't everywhere in the country, but some areas do it for all children, and some areas it's given to children at high risk. Mm -hmm. And then there's a primary vaccination given at two, three, and four months, and that's all the same vaccines at each time. And then there's a gap, and then there's some boosters. And MMR is given a little later on at about 13 months. Okay, great. Vaccinations, injections, I mean, it seems awful to inject such a small baby against something. You know, it mm. must be painful for them. Mm. I think it must be. I guess we don't remember those things very well. Fortunately. I mean, some babies cry and some don't. I mean, I have to say, some babies look at it and wonder what you've done and don't seem to react at all. I think you've got to compare that with all the distress and trouble if you get the, the infection. All the, all the problems that go with that, be it that fever, sickness, coughing, whatever the problem is, serious problems, being hospitalized, having to have blood tests, having to have treatment. If you weigh it up, it's actually a pretty good trade-off. And I think most of the time, it offers a good balance between protecting the child against all those things that still do happen. Okay. I mean, how do, what's the overriding decision of whether or not to immunize my child? Because, of course, with the MMR scare earlier in the year, a lot of people decided not to do it. Mm. Well, as far as we're concerned, medically, there's virtually no reason not to immunize a child. There's very few conditions that make it worrying to immunize somebody. If they've got some serious problem with their immunity, we need to take some careful thought. But for most children, there's no doubt they're much better off being protected against all these infections than running the risk of coming across them and getting ill. Dr. Ian Pollock, thank you very much for coming in and speaking to us. Thank you.